This procedural edgeware setup for Blender is super, super easy and adds so much detail to your renders. You are totally going to want to use it for like everything from now on. I know because I am using it all the time. There's nothing going on here other than the edgeware and it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just gorgeous and it is dead easy to do. So we're going to create a new material and change our view over here to the shader editor. Hit N to collapse this panel and we've got a setup. Now, basically everything you're going to need to make this edgeware work is a bevel node and a mix RGB node. Now, more specifically, you're going to need two bevel nodes. One is just going to have the radius set to zero, and you can bring the samples all the way down. And the other is going to have the samples set up a little bit, maybe, and the radius is going to be a bit higher. Now, if you plug these two in together and change the factor to one, we can preview it and see it's just a view of the normals of our object. Let's change the blending mode to difference, and you can see that now we have this really nice edge effect. This isn't the entire effect, though. We're not quite done. To make it black and white, first of all, we need to take the color ramp and we're just going to plug it in there and that's going to be that's going to be that i like to change this to constant now and then drag this to sort of get a harder a harder sort of line um now i mean there are more advanced techniques that you can do as well by the way to get more complete edgeware because obviously this isn't covering around the entire circle here if you want to do that you can actually take a separate hue saturation value node and plug that in instead that is going to give us this more even black and white output and then again we feed it through a color ramp just to get it tighter. It's really the best way to describe that. And this looks pretty good. We could take this and plug this into the metallic value of our principal BSDF. And we're starting to get something. Let's maybe take another color ramp and use this as the color factor. Now if we change our base color to maybe something like blue or a bright yellow, we can see our shining edge effect a little bit better. I want to add a touch of extra detail though. So I'm going to add in an image texture node. I'm going to be taking this surface imperfections map from space opera textures, which you can buy from FraserFX.com. If we plug it into the radius of the bigger bevel, you can see that we're getting all of this crazy effect here. We're getting a bunch of surface imperfections on top of our original edgeware. Now looking at our edgeware, there's way more imperfection to it, but I think we can have a little bit more control if we want to. Now it's pretty apparent we've got way more imperfections going on. We've got a lot of scratches over more of the surface. And some of this edgeware right along the corners here is being reduced to nothing. I want a little bit more control over that. Now between our smudges base color and our bevel node, we're going to take a map range node and drop that right in the center. What this is going to allow us to do is change the minimum bevel radius and the maximum bevel radius. If we set the minimum to maybe 0.01, for example, you can see that there's never a part of the edge that doesn't have edgeware. And if we take the maximum and maybe bring it down a bit, it kind of makes the, the whole effect a bit more subtle. We can even bring it down even lower than that if we wanted to. This effect, though, can be used for more than just creating metallic edges. Maybe instead of plugging this into the metallic, we simply use it to influence the color. Let's change our node setup a little bit here. In this case, you can see the edges now are a little bit brighter and a little bit less saturated. This creates almost like sort of a plastic wear effect, almost like it's been sitting out in the sun for a long time, rather than the effect of paint being chipped away. The hue saturation node will let us change our colors. And we've simply added subtle detail to the entire model. Let's make it a little bit more extreme so you can see it better. Maybe turn up the distance. And then we compare this with what is actually the opposite effect. Adding a little bit of ambient occlusion can go a long way to creating a nice dirty look. If we plug in our same map range node into the distance of the ambient occlusion, we get a similar effect with the grunginess of our dirt. As you can see, these textures are useful for a variety of different kinds of effects, and it looks really, really cool. It's got this crazy dynamic effect, and even if we duplicate this object, you can see that this crevice dirt is updating as we move and rotate our object. So it even continues to make it look right as you're modeling your, well, your model. But there's still some really crazy techniques that we can take advantage of using these brand new textures. So if you want to see some more of these secret tips and tricks, you can click on this video right here. I highly recommend it.